In this video, I'm gonna show you how to patch something like this, this, and this. And we're gonna do it right now. I wanna start this video out by sending out a huge shout out to Flex Seal, who is sponsoring this video and provided me with the Flex Glue to do the job. I love these guys. I love using their products. I'll leave a link in the description over to the other videos that I've done with them, but don't go watching them yet. Watch this one first. Again, huge shout out to Flex Seal. So if you've been following my channel, you'll know that I've been doing a lot of work in this hallway here, reframing a bunch of stuff. And I used to have a wall right here. I used to have an archway right here. There was a wall over there. So now I have all these spots that need to be filled in because I am gonna do another floor on top of this one. So I had a wall here. I had a cast iron stack that came up through the floor right here. And then over here, same thing. There was a wall right here. So I have to fill all that in in preparation for a floor. I'm gonna start with this little patch right here. Now, the first thing you wanna do is determine the layers of flooring. Right here, you have the subfloor that goes directly on top of the floor joist. And then in my case, I have what looks like maybe three quarters or five eighths right here that goes on top of the subfloor. And then I have a layer under this stick tile that is rolled vinyl. And then I have this stick tile. Now, one thing that is going to be uh, a little tricky for me is that this flooring right here, I am not supposed to be touching because it contains asbestos. So I would probably be okay, uh, you know, slicing into it, cutting it however I have to, but I'm gonna stick to the rule that if it's in good shape, don't touch it. But another thing you should keep in mind is the type of flooring that you're using. If you're using a thinner material, like rolled vinyl or the stick tile, and you don't make the floor perfect or close to perfect, this could happen. See how it's cracking. And the reason that is, is because I filled this in with plywood. And if I peel this one up, you can see that there is a transition right here. And it's not much, maybe an eighth of an inch, and still that happened. So in order to avoid that, you should be using some type of floor leveler if you have something that is uneven like that. Or just don't use stick tile or vinyl. Stick tile, you get all this, all these gaps. It just moves around too much and it just doesn't look good. So the first step in my case, since I'm gonna be working from the bottom, and layering up is I wanna figure out what the thickness of this is here. So I take my tape and it looks like that's about five eighths. And that is actually about seven eighths, which is not ideal, but I'm not doing stick tile or vinyl flooring. And it actually looks like there was some kind of weird transition here anyways. And that's probably why they're two different heights but I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna split the difference here. I'm just gonna use a piece of three quarter plywood to fill in here, and then we'll go from there. That is about four and a half. It's two and three quarters right there, and it's about two and five eighths right there. I'm okay with having gaps here, and you could fill them afterwards, or you could cut this kind of at an angle and make it perfect. That's up to you. I'm just gonna do two and five eighths by four and a half, and I'll have some gaps. It'll be fine. All right, let's see how this piece is gonna fit. You always wanna test fit it before you actually put it in there. So you don't want a bunch of glue there and then having to take it out and try and cut the piece afterwards. I'm not gonna push it all the way down. I know it's gonna fit. Now I wanna clean this out. You can use an old chisel or whatever you have to kind of scrape this, make sure there's all the years of dust and debris are out of there. I have some felt paper right here 
that I can cut with a knife. Looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna vacuum that out. All right, I'm gonna get my flex glue ready. Actually, flex glue comes in the max size now, which is 28 ounces, which would be great if I was doing a whole bunch of floor, but I think this size will be perfect for what I'm doing. Did you guys know this? Whoa, is your mind blown? No, okay. So I'm gonna load this right up with glue. The reason for the glue is because if you do walk on it and you just attach with fasteners, it could squeak and this will stop it from squeaking completely. And obviously it's gonna hold it into place a lot better and make it a lot more strong. So I like to load up all the corners and put a bunch in there. Now I have a basement under there. If a little glue falls through the cracks, that's all right. But I will try to avoid that space in the middle. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now I can take my piece, push it in there. At this point, you could throw some nails in here, but what I like to do is use screws. These are two inch construction screws and it should pull it right down into place. I like using screws because I feel like they grab a lot better. And ideally, if your floor is opened up enough and you can find joists, Getting some long screws right into the joist would be the way to go. So what you have here now is three different plywood thicknesses. This is uh, probably seven eighths. It's probably an old, old board or something, or there might be something underneath it like felt paper, raising it up. Then you have three quarter and then a step down to five eighths. So if I was to do this floor, this is where I would do the floor leveler and I would bring it up to the height of the vinyl that's under there. And then I would put this floor on there. Now what I would do if I wasn't filming this, I would take two square pieces this size, stack them on top of each other and call it a day because my flooring is going to run right over it. But in your case, if you are doing a finished floor, I'll show you how to do that. The first thing you want to do is find the factory edges of the whatever material you have. In my case, factory edge is right here, factory edge is right here. So this is the one that needs to come up. So you can take this out. Okay, I've vacuumed this out again, and I'm going to actually reuse the piece that was here. I'm just going to hold it to this piece of vinyl. And I'm going to make a mark. The good thing about stick tile is it's real easy. That's all you got to do. And now I have my, my filler piece basically right here. That is not perfect, but of course, you know, that's okay. And then I have a full leftover tile. I always like having extra whenever I do a floor, just in case something like this happens. Now I can take a measurement. Of course, you could take a frame and square and hold it against here and use it as a straight edge to cut this. But this is not going to be perfect. I don't care if I slice into my floor. Just watch out for all those things if this is your actual finished floor. And mark this. Mark it right here. So it'll go under the baseboard a little bit. Okay. Sneak it under that baseboard. First patch done. Looks great. You'd never know. On to the next. Okay, let's do this patch next. I believe I'm gonna do the same floating floor in here. Either that or I'm gonna do carpet. For this one, what I'm gonna do is take my level and I'm gonna check this in a couple places. 
to see. About an inch and an eighth there. My little tiny torpedo level. Check that. And that's about an inch. That's about an inch as well. I think that that eighth inch will be fine for what I'm doing. Again, if you wanted to, you would want to do floor leveler. If you're putting down some thin flooring like linoleum or the stick tiles, but I think for carpet or the floating floor that I'm planning on doing, I'll be fine. So I'm gonna say one inch because I have half inch plywood. So I'm gonna cut two pieces of half inch plywood. So if you wanted to make a nice square patch, you could mark this, measure this and make it even to here, make a line and cut it with something like this tool, my favorite tool ever, or you can cut it with a sawzall or even a circular saw if you wanted to just down to that layer. Just make sure you set the depth of your saw if you do use a circular saw. But I'm actually going to cut this little puzzle piece. And here's a little tip how I like to do this. I like to draw out what the patch is gonna be. So it's gonna be like this. And then I will take measurements just like this in different places. It's like two and three quarters is gonna work right here. So I know that's gonna be two and three quarters wide. 20 and five eighths looks good. So I'll mark 20 and five eighths right here. Five and a half. Two and three quarter. Now I'll take this and cut two pieces of half inch plywood. It fits, but now it's stuck. <laughs> Trying to pry it out. And as I'm doing that, I can see that this floor is a little loose. So I'm gonna make sure to put some screws in here. Here's a tip for you. Use a screw. Boom. Okay, now I can cut another one of these. Now we can clean this out. Same way that we did the other one. Make sure there's no nails that are sticking up. Sometimes after years and years, nails start to pop through. Make sure those are all set. Use my flex glue. Another reason I like using glue all around the edges is if you have to use floor leveler afterwards, it'll fill in all the cracks if you have any so that the leveler doesn't just drip to the floor below and create a void. Uh, sometimes when you pour the stuff in really thin, it can go right through the cracks and you'll have to keep filling in a couple times. So with the glue, it'll fill in all those cracks and crevices that the filler might find its way down through. I'm gonna do this one piece at a time. Throw my first piece in. And I'm just gonna throw three inch and a quarter screws in there. Make sure the screw heads get sucked right into that plywood. Test fit this one. More glue. Same way. All along the edges. That just makes sure that everything is nice and tight. And if the flooring around it is loose, it'll actually tighten that flooring up too. Like I noticed this was a little loose, but once this glue dries, it should hold everything into place nice. Now I can use my two inch construction screws. This is pretty good, but you know what I think would actually make it perfect is if I cut this back, right here, by the way, 
all of this flooring was tested and came back negative for anything bad. Now with all that stuff out of there, I think it is going to be perfect if I do a piece of quarter inch from here to here and here to here. Cover that whole piece up. Well, I got a quarter inch piece and when I put it in there, I thought I had the right idea, but it looks like it's a little too high. So I could either leave it like that and uh, go over it or I could use these stick tiles because that is going to make it perfect. So I think that's what I'm going to do. That way it'll be nice and level. It really doesn't matter what you use for flooring as long as you try and match up the heights as best you can. So stick tiles it is. So here's what I decided to do before I put those tiles in. I got my V-notch trowel and I just took a bunch of flex glue and I'm gonna glue this entire thing so that the tiles won't move around. They shouldn't crack like they did before. And this will fill in any of those voids, any of those gaps in between the plywood and the other floor. I think this is gonna work good. If flex glue can hold up 300 pounds of bricks, I think it can hold down this stick tile. Seriously, I tested it. I love this stuff. Thank you again to Flex Seal for sponsoring this video. This isn't like a typical thing, like you should expect to do this every time you fill in flooring, but what you should expect is, like with any home repair, is to problem solve and come up with your own solution like this. Adding those tiles made all the difference. That is perfect. Moving on. All right, it's time for this patch. And this one is a little messy. So from underneath, you can see a lot better what's going on here. This was hacked out for a cast iron pipe that went up through the roof. And you can see they Hacked up quite a bit of this. Now, the ideal situation would be to cut this subfloor back to this joist. But that flooring up there is the flooring that I can't cut. And besides, that is the old outside wall, and that wall is sitting on top of it. So I'd never be able to cut that half on that joist and get something in there. I did a similar patch over here for the bathroom. And over here, you can see I cut the subfloor right back to the joist and I filled it in. And I will leave a link in the description over to that video so you can see how I did it. But for this one, we're gonna have to get a little more creative. If I was doing real tile above this, uh, what I probably would do, let's say the hole is right here, I would take some 2x8, let's pretend this is a 2x8, and go right underneath where the hole is on both sides. I would attach it real good to the existing joists, and then I would go from there. But I think I have an easier solution that will be plenty strong for my floating floor. So let me show you that. So my plan is to take this piece and put it flat up against here and secure it to the joists here, here, and screw down the subfloor into it. And then that'll be my starting point to work my way back up. I just need to make sure I don't have any nails in the way. Like this one, it's going to come right out. This is not an ideal location. Kind of hard to access. I actually have a timber lock here. Okay, I got some glue on both sides where it's gonna touch the subfloor. So before I attach it down there, I'm gonna attach it up here. So I want to bring this tight 
think three inch screws are gonna do it. Let's see. Yeah, two inch, I don't think are long enough. Yep, and that went up tight. Now I'm gonna cut this back even with this. split. I figured that might happen. It's nice and tight against the subfloor here. I can go back downstairs and attach it into the joists. I think between the screws into the joists, and the screws coming down and the flex glue, I think that's gonna be nice and solid for my floating floor. I ended up cutting this back a little more square and I vacuumed this up. And what I'm gonna do now is take a measurement for my first piece, again, working from the bottom up. And what I wanna do is tuck it in here just a little bit and then tuck it in here as much as I possibly can. Six by six and a half, and it is three quarters. What I realized is there's really no way for me to get this under here and under here at the same time. So I'm gonna get it under here and the glue will hold everything else together. I mean, this is solid anyways, because it's sitting on the subfloor here and subfloor here. I'm not even gonna test fit it. I really can't because then it's gonna get stuck when I try and pull it back out. So I'm just gonna glue it right in. All the edges and the middle. The field, as you would call it. Oh. Nice. That's perfect. That raised that up just a little bit. So now I'm gonna fill in this piece and then I'll do a separate strip right here just to make it easier. Flex glue and get right under those old pieces. Well, this is the last of the tiles I have in my possession. And this is where I'm gonna use them. I'm not gonna make it, you know, like this is the finished floor. I'm just gonna hack these up and put them in. But I really like the, the glue idea underneath here. So I'm gonna do it again right here. I think it's gonna be way more solid. I'm not gonna lie. I really don't like the way that looks, but it's perfect. Once the floor goes on there, it's going to be perfect. That one looks perfect. This one doesn't look great, but it is perfect. And this one looks terrible, but it's perfect. And sometimes that's just what you have to deal with when you have an old house and you run into situations like this floor. I don't wanna pay $4,000 to remove the floor underneath it to do tile. So floating floor over what I have. So I just patched it in so that it's solid, it won't squeak, and it's gonna be flush. The entire floor will be flush. And when my floor goes over it, you won't even know. 
So it is the next day. Still don't like the way this looks, but the good thing is it is really solid. That stuff is not moving. So if I did that over here, you can see that moves pretty easily. Flex glue for the win. But here's what I really wanted to show you. This whole time doing all this framing and everything after I took out this wall that was here, we have had a carpet just to cover up this hole for now so you can walk on it and everything. And I kind of heard a weird noise and I thought, oh, whatever, it's just the plywood underneath because I put plywood here, quarter inch plywood, so we wouldn't fall in the hole basically. And I heard this weird noise over and over again and I'm like, eh, whatever, I'll figure it out when I do this. Well, I did this and this is really interesting. So if you step right here, So of course I wanted to investigate it and find out what it is. I cut this square out. Can you guess what it is? Hmm. It looks like a tin can lid nailed to the floor. So this covers two of the things that you don't want to happen when you patch a floor. One is sound and one is movement. So I thought to myself, that must have drove the people nuts here before because this was a finished floor. And then I realized this is where the wall was. You can see the traffic pattern worn into the floor. They come out of the bedroom and came through the doorway that was right here. So they never really stepped on it. But now I have changed the traffic pattern, as you can see. So I gotta get rid of that just in case I feel like if I cover it up with the floating floor, it'll either stay down or the floor will cover enough of this to not make it do that. But just really funny. Let's uh, let's take it out and figure out what's underneath it. If I had to guess, it's just a, a hole, maybe a pipe was there at one point, or maybe there's treasure in there. Let's find out. What do you guys think it is? I'm nervous. It's a hole. That looks like the size of a heat pipe. I'm pretty sure they had steam heat, so the big uh, cast iron radiators. So that's probably what that is. And there's the hole. Funny, I never noticed that before. But this is the pipe that I suspect was up there before, before they did this addition. So all I'm gonna do for this is make sure the nails are either out or hammered down. And then I'm gonna take some insulation. This is called thermofiber. It's basically fire and sound proof insulation. And just because I have it, I'm gonna tuck some in there. Make sure it doesn't tuck so far down that it drops into the basement. And then I'm gonna cover it. I'll put these pieces back where they were, like nothing even happened. Then I'm gonna tape it. And I'm gonna call it a day. My flooring will go right over that and I'll have no problem. No more sound, no more movement. So again, huge shout out to Flex Seal for sponsoring this video and for supplying the Flex Glue to do this job. I really appreciate it. If you guys want to see more videos like this, you can click Hereish and Hereish and check those out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there.